Come on and worship him, worship him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh, sing it, sing it, sing it. All I need to do, all I need to do, all I need to do, Lord, is worship you. Hallelujah. All I need to do, all I need to do, all I need to do, Lord, is worship you. How many is glad you can worship in the house of the Lord? How many is glad you can worship in the house of the Lord? Oh, come on and praise Him. Yeah, sing it, Sandra. All I need to do, all I need to do, all I need to do, Lord, is worship you. All I need to do is praise Him alive. Oh, come on, come on, come on. about it. All I need to do, all I need to do, all I need to do, Lord, is worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All I need to do, all I need to do, all I need to do, Lord, is worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't it great to just be able to worship him loudly or worship him softly or just lift our hands or just 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 cry or just hallelujah just lift our voices and it's awesome we can do that worship you hallelujah you may be seated I want the team to just stay with me. Is that okay, Mark? You got to go upstairs? Oh. Uh, who's handling it up there? Chris, handle it, man. I need, I need Mark for a few minutes. Praise the Lord. This Lutheran pastor uh, had three uh, Baptist colleagues in uh, and they accepted uh, this pastor's invitation to participate in a worship service. One Sunday, she placed an additional three chairs out in the sanctuary, and the assistant pastor asked what they were for, and he said, uh, three chairs for the Baptist. He said, what? I can't hardly hear. He was hard of hearing, this associate pastor. And he said, three chairs for the Baptist. He said, what? I still can't hear you. He, he, the pastor practically shouted and said, three chairs for the Baptist. And that associate pastor got up and said, hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes, and then we'll, we'll cut Mark loose. But I, I need some music. Oh. He'll be right back. All right. He said he would be right back? He's going to fix it? Okay. Did the rapture take place, or what did it just happen? We're going to talk about worship. We're going to talk about worship for just a moment. We're going to talk about worship. Now, what I'm going to do today is just, just a few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I'm going to just give you a teaser on, on a potential um, series coming up. We're going to talk about multi, multi-directional worship, and this is a, a message that I... Uh, preached many, 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 many years ago. And 
And, and but I, you know, I was going through, and I thought, man, I got to bring some of this back. See, our our, our worship is upward. Our worship is inward. And our worship is outward. Hallelujah. And, and, and it's downward. You say, well, how, it's down, how is it downward? Well, come to the series. You'll see. But worship is a communication with God. It's ascribing praise and reverence and honor to him. The word worship comes from the word worth. Somebody say worth. Uh, it, it means worth-ship. It means... Uh, it it, it uh, means value. Value. How many value the Lord? I say, how many value the Lord? It, 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 it prepares a person, worship, I, I'm going to tell you, prepares a, a person to hear for, from God. Man, when this team, Sandra Payne and this crew get up here and they start worshiping, on Sunday, man, I'm telling you, people are ready to hear the word. Uh, you know, and I like the song they just sang, and we're going to have them sing a little bit more in a little bit. Uh, but the song, all I have to do is worship. Amen. And I, I just want to give you just a, a few points about what worship is with some of the definitions of worship. In other words, worship defined or praise defined hallelujah you see worship prepares a person to hear from god and and and, and through his word and by proclamation of the gospel oh listen to me the gospel is the good news what does gospel mean good news how many, how many, there was an old song that said, sure could use a little good news today. Man, when somebody says that to me, well, I got some good news for you. It's called the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. What is it? That he died for us. That they laid him in the grave. That on the third day he rose again. That he's coming back for his children. That's good news. It's good news. Good news. And those who accept God's promises by faith are counted as worshipers. How many have accepted Christ? Let me see hand to Christ. What, what that means is that by faith you're, you, you are a worshiper of the true God. Well, who's the true God? Well, some of the world believes it's Buddha. Some say Muhammad. Some say Hare Krishna. But all of those gods are dead and gone. But our God, hallelujah, sent his son Jesus to die, hallelujah, part of the triune God, hallelujah, we just talked about it, he rose again. We're worshipers of the true God. Revelations talks about it just a little bit. In Revelations 14, 6, it says, I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Uh, to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that's why we worship him? Because he made everything. Well, that, I guess some of you agree. I say, how many know we're glad to worship him because he made everything? The sea, the trees, the stars in heaven. So worship defined today. You know, there's a lot of words for worship. Don't leave me. Oh, I'm sorry. Get a drink of water. See, I'm a hard taskmaster, I'm telling you. She can't even get a drink of water. 
<laughs> One word for worship. See, a lot of people see the word worship, and they say, well, it all means the same thing. But, but what you see when you see in worship in English, well, there's the Greek breaks it down better. One word for worship is shaha. Somebody say shaha. And that word means to fall prostrate um, in homage to royalty or to God. To bow yourself down to worship him. What does that mean? That means when, when, when it talks about that kind of worship, it means we need to worship him, our God, as king. To fall before him prostrate, to treat him as you would in any royalty. You know, if, if you were coming before a king, uh, often they would bow down before the king. And, and what, the, what that word, word is saying is that you need to treat him with reverence, to treat him with awe and, and, and fear, which means uh, to, to absolutely show him respect. And if you'll notice that any time any of the prophets in the Bible came in contact with God, they shook. That's how, that's how awesome God is. You see, uh, the, the, pre, the high priest, when they went into the holy of holies, they were shaken in their boots because this was a, a holy God, a powerful God, a, a God who, who created everything. Oh, hallelujah. How many know we worship that kind of God? So what I'm going to ask you to do right now is I want you to give him some shaha worship. I want you to praise him. I want you to give him glory. Come on. Give him praise and glory to the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, when he comes back on his vesture, will read the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Give him another hand. Come on. Another word in, in, in worship, another word for worship uh, in, in another place is proskuneo. And it's realizing who God is and, and who you are. Now, what does that mean? It means having humility in worship. It, it means, uh, well, actually, what, what, that, what that really means is to, to uh, the actual scripture means to, like a, like a puppy dog, uh, go before your master. And, and, and it really means to lick his hand. <laughs> That's what it means. So, so what, what this means is that we are like, really, we're not worthy of salvation. We're not worthy of what he does for us. But, and, and, and so we're, you know, kind of like that. We're, we're without Christ. We're just dogs, so to speak, you know. But God honors us as sons and daughters. He he. He adopted us into the family. When Jesus died on the cross and when we receive him, we become adopted into the family of God, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. That means you can say, Hallelujah. I know what I was. I was nothing but a dog. But now because of the blood of Jesus, I'm a son uh, or you're a daughter. Hallelujah. And you can go before him, praise the Lord, and thank him by saying, Daddy, glory to God. Jesus said the hour comes. And now is when true worshipers, uh, how many are true worshipers? True worshipers. When true worshipers, what's the word? Proskuneo. Oh, man, I, I'm getting excited about this. 
Proskuneo. Uh, it's that word we talked about, humility. Uh, for true worshipers shall worship him like that, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is, here's what the scripture says, is seeking such people to worship him. Amen. He's looking for people to worship him. He's looking for true worshipers. Is, is there, you know, if God is looking, and he is, and he's looking right now, and, he, and the Bible says he is. How many true wor worshipers do we have here today? Lord, I'm one. Lord, you don't have to look any further. I'm one. Right here, God. Somebody shout, right here, God. Right here, God. If you don't start out with a, a heart relationship with God, all other kinds of worship is in vain. And then another word for worship is is sebome. Sebome. Now this kind of worship is a religious worship. It was used uh, by Jesus in Mark 7, 7. He said, however, they were, they, in vain they worship me teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. This is Jesus talking about um, Pharisaic worshipers, talking about religious worshipers, talking about those that, you know, they come and they, they know the right things to say. They, they know, they, you know, they got the, the Christianese down pat. They you know, how are you doing? Oh, God is good all the time. Amen. And yet inside, they don't communicate. They, they don't have a real relationship. Does that make sense? Inside, they, they just, it's just a form. It's just a, it's just a routine, I'll put it. You know, they, they really don't want to. You know, sometimes in our lives, and we've all done it, we hide from God. We don't feel worthy. We don't feel like we deserve it. And, and sometimes we'll do things that we shouldn't do. Can I get a witness? Does anybody else besides me know that kind of feeling? So you hide from God, and then sometimes, then we become religious. And so we don't make contact or have communication with God, but we'll but we'll still come to church sometimes and we'll still do all the right things, but God is not just wanting you to cross every T and dot every I. He wants to know you. Hallelujah. I said God wants to know you. He wants to be a part of your life. He, he wants to be a part of those small things. He, he wants to be a part of those the crisis. He wants to be a part of the big things. He wants to... He wants to be your friend. Abraham was a friend of God, and, and God says, I want to be your friend too. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock, and if you let me come in, we'll have dinner together. Woo! Oh, my. Praise the Lord. So that's a religious, religious worship. I'm just... I don't know what time I got up here, but I'm just going to keep you 15, 20 minutes, so just hang with me. This is just a teaser for the up-and-coming, <laughs> for the up-and-coming series. And the other type of worship, the word worship there is letreo. And Paul, Paul used, uh, Paul used this one. Praise the Lord. Paul used this one. It means to, to minister, to, 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 to pay homage, to serve, really. You know, this is, you know, when Paul said, I, I beseech you or I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. God, which is your reasonable, that word service is latreo. It's, it's a type of worship. It means, oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. 
It means to worship him in service. By serving. (laughs) This is a bad time to tell a joke, but I got to. A pig and a chicken were walking through a poor section of the city, and the chicken said to the pig, Look at all those hungry people. Let's give them some ham and eggs for breakfast. The pig said, wait a minute. For you, that's just a donation. For me, that's a sacrifice. (laughs) Preaching the gospel, like I'm doing right now, is worship. Hallelujah. Working with those that have addictions and clean, sober, saved, and primary purpose is worship. Oh, somebody hear me. Feeding the homeless is worship. Clothing the naked is worship. Visiting those in prison is worship. Hallelujah. Going to the hospital this week when I went to see Michael, my neighbor, who is going through it, and and, and prayed with him. It it was worship. Oh, hallelujah. Going to visit Stacy is worship. Going to to see my mother this a couple of days ago to pray for. By the way, she said, a bad report. We were surprised. We were all shocked because she was doing so good. But she had a a rough report. (laughs) And I went to see her... uh, uh, it was yesterday, and I said, Mom, what kind of report did you, did you get a report? Oh, it was good, she said. It's a good report. Oh, hallelujah. And as I prayed for her, I was worshiping. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Oh, glory to God, no job is too small or too big. It's worship. It's an attitude that says, I can be used. I don't care if nobody knows my name. Oh, that's worship. I don't care if nobody knows my name. So the next part of that, Scripture, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then it goes on to say, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's an inward trans. Uh, spiritual motion of examination and transformation. We're being transformed when we do that kind of worship. Right here, right here. Can somebody understand what I'm saying? Uh, we're, we're being transformed when, when we do that, that outward. I'm going to be talking about that in the series. Uh, you know, but, but when we do that, we're being transformed. The word transformed is metamorphi, or meta, it's from the word metamorphosis. It's like when, when the, the caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> Anybody hear me? If you're always concerned about getting credit or recognition or applause, you haven't renewed your mind. You're still a caterpillar just moving around. You're just a caterpillar wanting to become a butterfly. But you're not there. There's a lot of Christians that are caterpillars. They would you help me with this ministry? Uh, no, I don't think so. Caterpillar. Uh, how does what a caterpillar do? Does that look funny? My daughter's laughing at me. It's more like a worm. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the funny thing is when you get to the point that you don't seek to be applauded and you don't really care if anybody recognizes you, then you become a butterfly. How many want to go from a caterpillar to a butterfly for God? Somebody's got to give him praise right now. Somebody ought to praise him right now if that's what you want to do. Go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. All right. All right, I got about five, six minutes. So let's, depri- let's define praise. That was worship. Let's define praise. Somebody say yada. <laughs> yada is a power of praise. You've heard of a power walk? I don't even know what a power walk is. Anybody ever do a, a power walk? You're walking with somebody. <laughs> but this is power praise. It's a, it's, it is demonstrated as an action. It means an extension of our hands in relationship to power as we confess that God is the one that we worship and praise. Oh, hallelujah. So let's extend the hands. And let's, yada, yada. Praise the Lord. And the next one is toda. Somebody say, ta-da. It means a praise of thanksgiving. It is is also an extension of the hands in the spirit of adoration. There's an implication of the hands being extended two ways in this form of worship. If the hands are extended with cupped hands, you are showing faith an expectation that God is going to meet your every need. But if you do it like this, you're saying, I just want to adore you. I just want to thank you. I just want to give you praise for everything you've done. Is there anybody thankful here? Is there anybody that God's blessed here? Is there anybody who wants to say thank you, God, for touching, for delivering, for saving, for healing? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The next one is halal. Somebody say halal. And halal is is used in the scriptures where it says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. This word halal it is the first part of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ja meaning Jehovah. Halal meaning to boast about your God. Meaning to praise him with crazy praise. Meaning to, uh, here's what it means now. I'm going to tell you exactly what the Greek definition is to be clamorously foolish in your praise unto God. What does that mean? That means I don't care what anybody thinks I look like when I praise him. I might get up and dance. I might shout. I might lift my hands. People may think I'm foolish. I know the world thinks I'm foolish, but let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him hello. Until Jehovah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm getting ready. I need the drums in just a minute. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> Maybe he'll hear me up there while he's editing. See, this is why we need help. We need, we need extra. Here he comes. Ha, ha, ha. 
Oh, he's showing up. He's trying to show up up there. He's trying to show up over here. He's trying to show up on the back there helping those guys back there. If there's anybody shows up, Mark shows up. Give the Lord a praise for that. So it means to praise the Lord, to, to give him crazy praise. Can I get some folks right now? Uh, don't worry about what your neighbor says. Don't worry about what your friends say. Don't worry about what the world says. Can I get somebody to give him some crazy praise? Some, some calamitously foolish praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Somebody might be saying right now, you get too excited about your Christianity. Somebody might be saying, oh, I don't think you need to act like that in church. A church should be a little more quiet. Let me tell you something. This, this right here, I read it. I studied it out. Hallelujah. When David danced before the Lord, when the Ark of the Covenant came home, it was it specifically said that he gave God crazy praise. And I use this often, and I'm going to use it again tonight. It don't bother you going to a football game going, come on, standing up and screaming, come on, let's go. I mean, even with the Browns having a, a, an absolute losing record, when you get into that game, you're cheering up, you're jumping up and down, you're screaming, you're hollering. And yet, well, I just don't want to get too excited in church. Just, uh, you know, what will my, what will the visitors think? What will my, what will my friends think? They'll think there's something wrong with me. But I got news for you. If you can, you know, and I know some folks are, you know, they're more reserved. My wife is a little more reserved. I've seen her dance a time or two in the spirit, but <laughs> in general, she's more reserved. But let me tell you something. I really truly believe there are times that God wants us to give him crazy praise. Praise that says, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody thinks about it. I'm gonna praise him. And if you've ever cheered for the Browns, somebody greater than the Browns, is here in this house tonight. Somebody greater than LeBron James is in this house tonight. Somebody greater than basketball or football or baseball is in this house tonight. And I'm talking about the Lord of Lords. And I'm talking about the King of Kings. Would somebody in this house help me praise him? Come on. Hallelujah, come on, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What are you gonna do? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Come on now. Might seem a little crazy, but I've got to praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! The next one, Zamar. It means a melodious praise by touching the strings or parts of a musical instrument. Hallelujah. I want you to understand this. Glory to God. There are places that are having concerts where they're playing instruments that are not for God, but, but they're for the world. But the beautiful thing about when you come here at Cathedral of Life Ministries, you got some folks that are saying, God's given me a talent and I'm gonna play it for God. Let me hear some cymbals, Mark. Come on. Crash those cymbals. Turn this up, turn this up. To show you how we need help here at the church, Lee Moore not only runs the sound for us, but he's got his bass back there playing bass at the same time. So he's running sound and he's playing bass. I want you to thump that bass just a little bit. Would you do it? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're talking about power praise. We're talking about Thanksgiving praise. We're talking about celebration praise. We're talking about melodious praise. And the last one we're going to do tonight, I want you to stand on your feet. Yeah, yeah. Then the last one is tequila, not tequila. Tehillah, and it means to sing praise, like my daughter just did. Yeah, a blessing, by the way. It means this is where this is where the word is. Thou art holy, O, o thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. The word praise there actually means a spontaneous new song singing from a melody in your heart by adding words to it. This refers to a special kind of singing. It is singing unprepared and unrehearsed songs. That's what Tehillah is. Sandra, you just did it a minute ago. Uh, that was just something you, you just came up with. I need you to do it one more time as we get ready to... We're getting ready to, uh, to close in just a minute. I want you to just sing something that just comes to your mind right now. awesome. Another place? Glory to God. And we're going to, we're going to, I think we're close with this scripture. Praise the Lord. Another place? Uh, don't, don't, don't leave it. Don't, don't. I 
Isaiah 61 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion how many's ever went through mourning or sadness and or maybe even going through it now uh, everybody probably to give unto them beauty or it means beautiful headdress for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of here's the word Tehillah <laughs> The garment of Tehillah for the spirit of heaviness that might be called, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Hallelujah. I won't forget. Somebody said, don't forget to take the offering. But I won't forget, believe me. A garment of praise when you're hurting. <laughs> Stephanie, you know what it's like when you were in the hospital that time? You know what? Oh, it's an awful, awful feeling. You know what it's like. The spirit of the, you know, he's going to, he said he's going to remove from us the spirit of mourning. When I went to see my mother, it hurt, it hurt. But you know what? I just started singing praise unto the Lord. I just started singing praise and, and I'm like Sandra, I'll just, I'll just make up the lyrics. I'll just make up the lyrics. You know why? He's given me a, a lot of lyrics to sing a song about. I can talk about how he healed me. I can talk about how he delivered me. I can talk about how when I went through the windshield of a car, hallelujah, I should have been dead, but I'm still alive. And here I am in the twilight of my life, still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he gave me the garment of praise. He gave me the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So here's how we're going to do this. I want to give you just a moment. I want you to prepare your offering. I want you to bring it forward. And once you bring it forward, I want you to stay up here. Because we're just going to pray for some folks. And we're going to just declare the goodness of the Lord. And I and also want to welcome, Chris brought a friend tonight, Ed. Let's give Ed a hand for joining us. And if he don't think, if he don't think I'm too crazy, he might come back. I don't know. And also with us tonight is Sharma and Charmaine. Sharma is... Uh, uh, Charmaine's mother and my and my brother Keith and who is from his own words best mother-in-law ever the only one right the only one yeah okay oh hallelujah so we want you we want you to bring your offering forward and then come to the front and we're gonna pray for some folks we're going to declare the blessing of the Lord. We're going to we're going to praise Him. We're going to give Him power, praise, thanksgiving, praise. We're going to give Him hallelujah, halal, praise. We're going to give Him zamar, praise. We're going to give Him tahila, praise. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. So good. Lord, you are good. You are so good to me. I gotta praise him. I gotta worship him. Lord, you are good. Watch this. We're gonna we're gonna believe uh, uh, for healing for Thomas Hensley. 
your wife's nephew. We're going to believe for that. In the name of Jesus. If there's anybody that's going through, anybody going through a, 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 a time of mourning, a time of grief, a time of sadness, I want you to just come right here in the middle right now. We're going we're gonna to pray for you, and then we're going to pray for everybody else. Praise the Lord. Uh, your nephew passed away. Praise the Lord. Anointed with oil. So right now, to symbolize the garment of, of praise, to symbolize this garment of praise, Tahila, hallelujah, point your hands toward Linda. And we're believing God to touch her in the name of Jesus and give her a garment of praise in exchange for this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Give her comfort right now. We're praying in your case for your wife's nephew that, that God will touch and intervene. In the name of Jesus. And we're praying. And we're praying for my mother. And you know what? Rough news, but God is a deliverer and he's a healer. And here's the way I feel about it. You've heard me numerous times. You've heard me numerous times. When God calls us home, then that's it. But until then, until we go, we're going to keep believing. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep declaring his blessings, his goodness. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, touch my mother, who's probably watching this. In the name of Jesus, we don't care what the doctors say. We're declaring healing over my mom in the name of Jesus. We also declare healing for Michael in the name of Jesus. We also declare healing for Stacy that this cancer will be gone in the name of Jesus. We declare your healing, God, over those that are hurting, over those that are down, over those that are hurting. Anybody else need a touch from the Lord? Anybody? Come on, come on, Rachel. Your friend Albert. In the name of Jesus. He's a miracle worker. Hallelujah. And we're believing God. It's going to just stand right there. We're going to believe God to give you comfort with a garment of praise. Hallelujah. Throw that on her. Throw that, throw that garment on her. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're believing for Albert to be touched at this time, to be healed at this time. We declare it and we speak it by the power of the Lord by the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else needs a touch from the Lord. Come on. Your son needs the Lord. I know he does. Come over here. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. This is, this is for, for Gary G. For Gary Jr. right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, is his head anointed? We're believing this for Gary Jr. And we're asking you, God, to touch. And this is hard for a father to see that the, their son that needs you. We're praying, God, that you'll touch and deliver by your power, by your hand. We're believing for a miracle of salvation in the name of Jesus. Somebody else. Yeah. your neighbor's cousin, and we're believing God right now. In the name of Jesus, Sandra T., throw this over. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're declaring your healing for her neighbor's cousin. By your power, your grace, and mercy,
the name of Jesus. Glory to God. God, do the work in this case. And we'll give you glory. And we'll give you praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. And I'm glad you came tonight, man. You know the Lord as your Savior. Praise God. We're proud of Chris. She's awesome. She's awesome. Thank you, Jesus.